One of the first videos I did on Darktable was about the workflow that I used from the input of the photo to the editing and the export. It was a long video and I couldn't go deeper in some parts that I really wanted to. Now, in this video, I'm gonna go instead deeper into the workflow that I use in the editing part of it. How do I divide my editing? Which process do I follow? And to do that, I'm gonna take a photo that I love from two years ago when it was still possible to travel. And I'm gonna take it from here to there. But let's get straight into the editing part of it. And here I am back. Actually, before going into the editing of the photo, I just want to mention that I divide my workflow in three parts. The first part is about controlling the photo, the full frame of the photo, having the correct exposure, the correct details. So I work on the contrasting, I work on the exposure, of course, brightness, uh, and all of these details on the entire photo. In the second part of the editing that I do, I usually try to concentrate on my subjects and highlight my subject inside the photo. So either blurring or darkening part of the photo, I just want to put the attention of the viewer straight into my subject, in this case, the free scale borders. And then the last part of the editing goes into the colors, controlling the colors and adding, removing and putting more emphasis to the colors that match the type of mood I have into my photo. So now let's get into the editing in the dark table interface. And here I am in the darkroom interface. I uh, just want to give you a little bit of background on this photo. I did it in the center of Havana and one of the beautiful streets over there. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of the editing I did two years ago and when I took the photo in Lightroom. I was still using Lightroom back then. And what I like of this photo uh, is my subject, which is these three skateboarders uh, into the middle of the street. And and I love it because, you know, the attention goes to the first rider, then it goes to the second rider, then to the third rider, and then it goes back, you know, because these guys looking back, creating a nice triangle. I don't particularly like everything on this editing, and that's why I decided to do it again into a dark table. Now let's get back to the photo in dark room, and this is the starting point uh, uh, with the photo importer with the filmic RGB uh, module activated. You see that I use all of these modules, and uh, as I said before, on the first part of this editing, I will work on the overall exposure and adding a few details here and there, and I do that with the exposure model and the two local contrast modules here. The second part of my editing. I work more on to, uh, trying to move the attention to the subject, which are the free riders here. And uh, I do that using uh, these other modules, which is the basic adjustment exposure one and two. And then the last part of my editing process, I go into controlling the colors of this photo. And to do that, I use the RGB curve, colorize, and colorize one. So these three modules on the top. So let's get started with the first module, which is the exposure. And with the exposure module, obviously what I want to do is to uh, increase the exposure of uh, my photo. And that's easily done, uh, just increasing the exposure here. And um, there's not much I can say, the exposure is uh, increased for the overall photo. And the second thing I want to do is to add some of the details into the photo overall and more details here in the street to give a little bit of a texture boost. And to do that, I use a local contrast, which is one of my favorite module. With the first local contrast module, I activate it and I just increase a tiny bit of the details from the default value. 
In doing that, unfortunately, I also dark up the uh, two drives here, but I will fix that later on. And the second local contrast module that I want to use is the local contrast one. And with the local contrast one, I'm basically working on the street and I'm gonna boost a little bit the texture here. How do I do that? I just increase a little bit the details here from um, uh, the default value, but you know, I'm gonna try to work only on this area and to do that I use a simple mask and I use a brush. So I'll show you the brush here. That's it. That's a simple line and with this simple line I can add actually the tiny bit here of texture and you can see before and after. And you can increase the opacity here as much as you like. By the way, I have also written a post that you can go and read where I talk more about the modules that I use usually for the first part of my editing, which is the overall exposure, the second part, which is more uh, focusing the attention to the subject, and the third part, which is more controlling the colors. Now let's get back to the photo and now we go to second part which is trying to focus more the attention of my subjects. As you see up to here I'm okay with my exposure and I'm okay with my details but still these three guys get lost a little bit into the photo because other people here because they are very dark too. So uh, I go straight away to the next module which is the basic adjustment and with this module what I do I add more light here in adding more light here you see how your eyes going into the brightest part of the photo which is here so that helps to uh, take the attention more into these free scale borders how do I add the light here? Very, very easy. I just go into the basic adjustment. I add a little bit of exposure, one step and a half. I add a little bit of a contrast and I increase the saturation and vibrance to take out some of the details into the uh, t-shirts and pants of these three boys. And uh, I do that only the central part of uh, my photo on the street, like I did before for contrast one. And to do that very easy once again I use a mask and I use a brush to do that I show you where did I use the brush straight here and just a triangle you know it's like a narrow that takes the attention to my free uh, skateboarders okay we are finished with this module now let's go to the next module and um, there are actually two modules, exposure one and exposure two. And with these two modules, I'm gonna try to paint a little bit of brightness, take out the details here on these free riders. And the other module is more about trying to dark up this side of the streets. And the reason being is that this is very bright and it's gonna take the attention a little bit also because it's quite predominant. And on the right side, you have all of these people. And as you know, uh, you know the attention goes always on the people, so it tends to go on these three guys but then it bounces back between left and right here and um, so let's activate the exposure one module and you see with uh, with this module once again I just add a little bit of exposure but only to these three guys and I show you the mask where it is applied only to these three guys and I do that with just the brush you know, and I do more on the first two riders. The reason being is that they were very dark, but I do a little bit, a tiny bit also to the third rider. Now let's see before and after. Before and after, let's take out these guys here. So before and after. You see now how they are brighter and the tension goes more into these three guys. Now let's try to dark up this side of the city and this side of the city, which create a lot of distractions. And to do that, I activate the exposure to module. Now the exposure to module here, 
and the exposure to module uh, what does it do darks up this side of a city but it does that in a very subtle way and you can see the mask here where I walk just a tiny bit on this way and on the other way how do I do that uh, simply using the brush nothing more nothing less but I do it in a, I think a smarter way and um, I show you how to do it uh, and I remove actually the brush that I did it before and I select the small uh, size photo and now with the brush I go here and I just paint a little bit in a curve but you see how my favoring radius is quite big and the bigger I go you see how I actually dark up that area and I can move tiny bit to increase it even more and I can do the same on the other side I can decrease here a little bit the opacity to 69% and it's all done so we can see the before and after you can see now how your attention is going back into the three guys let's fit to screen the photo and before and after now the tension doesn't go anymore on any other side let me actually move even more probably this guy here and it's all done now that i finished to give a more of attention to my subject here i'm gonna try to improve the colors of this photo giving a, a bit of a urban style but with a tropical touch uh, typical of havana and to do that i'm gonna go into the rgb curve which i find into the color modules here rgb curve and I activate the RGB curve and what did I do here uh, first of all uh, I use the RGB independent channel I went into the red channel and I increase a tiny bit I haven't done much on the green but on the blue I work a lot there so let me go and reset this and what did I want to do here the first thing I wanted to do is to add a little bit of bluish into my shadows as you know we have the shadows here on the bottom left and we have the highlights in the top right and the mid tone in the middle so I'm gonna take a little bit of the shadows adding a little bit of a blue and I'm gonna reset it here into the mid tones in order not to add bluish into the mid-tones just a tiny bit and then i want to add a little bit of orangish into uh, my highlights and how do i do it that here in the rgb curve simply you take the highlight and you take it down in your curve and you see how you're adding sort of yellowish orangish into your highlights and I exaggerate that just to give you an example of what's happening if I go down minus 100. And why is it doing that? Simply because when you work on the RGB curve, if you go on the upper part, means you're adding the blue. If you go down from the middle line, you're adding the opposite color to the blue in the color wheel, which is the orangish and yellowish. So I take it down here. Uh, I put it a little bit more and this is my curve you see before and after again it's a bit of a urban style with an exotic touch talking of urban style I've done already a video about urban editing but I'm gonna put a link on the top right if you want to see the video now I want to work on the sky which is a bit too brightish especially compared to the side of this building which is more orangish I want to give a similar kind of color and to do that I use the colorize module let's get into the colorize I activate it and you see how now the sky is becoming a little bit more orangish let me uh, just reset the mask and the module so i show you how i did it so what i did here i move a hue into the orangish and then i saturated a little bit but the change that I want to do obviously is only to the sky and to do that I go into the parametric mask and apply a gradient mask and apply to here 
but if I use only the gradient mask it's gonna work also on the buildings which is not what I want I want just to focus my attention into the sky and I go down into the parametric mask and I want to apply the change only to the sky so let's move it up here that's it and now that I've done that you see how the mask is applied only to the sky and slightly also on the side of the building uh, let me show you before and after before and after it's probably too much of a color so I'm gonna decrease here the saturation before and after the last thing I want to do is to add more of a light source because the light is coming from this side of the sky but you don't see the sun because it's right behind these buildings I want to add more of a light source here and to do that I'm using the colorize one module and let me show you what did I do here you see how I added this sort of sun coming here on this side and how did I do that? Let me reset everything. I go again into the hue and I'm gonna put a yellow in this case. So I increase the lightness to almost 100%. Obviously I want to apply this module only to the upper right part and I do that with a circle. And then I, let's say I want to put it here and I may want to increase the opacity a tiny bit. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I want to have from this side. Obviously in doing that I, I'm gonna work also on this side of the building, but that uh, I'm gonna avoid that with the draw mask. So I activate the draw mask here, I go on the luminosity and I'm gonna screw that side of the building. Let me activate these to show where I am applying. I started obviously from here, which was the starting point, and now I'm using my drawing mask to exclude that building and you see that now uh, the mask is applied only into the sky here and into this uh, tiny uh, gap here between uh, the buildings which is absolutely perfect let's take out the mask maybe it's a bit too much so i go into the opacity and i take it down a tiny bit from 35 to 25 percent to look more natural so let's see before and after you see how the sky tonality changes a little bit it makes the photo more natural so let's see before and after before and after and that's pretty much it about this video I hope you enjoy how I edit the photos uh, dividing my process in uh, three stages again overall exposure attention to the subject and controlling the colors as I said I wrote also a post about it and I'm gonna put a link into the video description and uh, I'll see you in the next video